Welcome back to Bandwagon Fans. I'm Jeff. Jason, hi. Good to see you back after a couple months of hiatus. Yeah. And uh, before we get started, I just want to thank all of the returning subscribers. And for any anybody that's new to the channel, go ahead and uh, hit that little red subscribe button under the video. Um, it's really it's always nice to see people subscribe to the channel. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Superfly. Superfly. So this is the 2018 remake um, directed by Director X and starring Trevor Jackson, um, Lexi Scott Davis, a pretty big ensemble cast. Yeah, yeah. Quick uh, uh, quick synopsis of the movie. A uh, guy real, real has quick. been kind of in the game his whole life and wants to get out. Yeah, couldn't have, couldn't have said it better. <laughs> so uh, enjoy some highlights, enjoy some highlights from the trailer. You literally could have taken any kid off the corner, but you chose me, why? These fools in the streets acting like they got something to prove. They only want to hustle for the money and the flash. But not you. You're special. Welcome to my world. I've been working these streets since I was 11. I gave people jobs when there were no jobs. I swapped cash for crypto. And redefined the hustle. I choose my crew wisely. Scatter, that's my mentor. I know that you miss your favorite student. I miss kicking your ass. Georgia, she's my inspiration. You can be whatever you want to be. And Eddie, that's my soul. Everything is moving smooth like butter. Appreciate your genius. You've been operating under the radar. All of that's about to change. This new crew, they have cartel connections. And they're coming after everything we have and everyone we love. What's the play here? One last score so big that we will never have to look over our shoulder again. But we have to go to the source. If we do this, there's no going back. Never was. All right, so Superfly. All right, so this is gonna be, we're just gonna be kind of a free-flowing discussion about sure. the whole movie, so um, uh, spoilers, where th there might be spoilers on this, so. Yeah. But I, but I don't think this, this isn't the kind of movie, this isn't Avengers 3. No, this no. This isn't Infinity War. You don't, you're not gonna, the movie's not gonna be ruined by any twist, because you're gonna see them coming a mile away anyways. It's just another one of those uh, modern uh, remakes of a uh, classic 70s yeah. uh, exploitation movie. Now, you're a big, you're a huge fan of black exploitation. Films, yeah, right? sure I am. Mm -hmm. So how does, so, or so, how does this, compare to the original well I mean they, they modernize it right I, I mean they, they, they definitely modernize it um, but uh, it, it pretty much stays true it's a guy that just he's he's been hustling he's been pushing his whole life yeah. and he wants out you know he's tired of it yeah so so Trevor Jackson is is the uh, young blood priest yeah you know same character from the from the 70s movie mm -hmm. um, they do the homage where they have his hair straightened like yeah. the guy in the 70s. He, he looks he looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh -huh. we'll, we'll talk about his performance in a minute, but yeah, so he's, it's very, I, I got a huge Carlitos Way vibe, you know, like he's, he's a gangster, but he's almost like the hooker with the heart of gold, really wants to get out of the life, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, I has mean, to has to figure out how to make all the dominoes fall in the right way because he's got so he so so some of the things that he's up against the Snow Patrol. His, Snow uh, Patrol was game. classic because I liked the way it was like a group of drug dealers that all had the same tattoo on their forehead, the crucifix. Yeah. They all wore white. They all drove white cars. Even their guns were, were white. white. They reminded they were me like of the First Order. <laughs> first Order guns. Yeah. Right, yeah. So uh, I, I really I really dug that. I dug the way that there was crooked cops along the way. I dug Gen the way that... Gen Jennifer Morrison and I forget the, I forget the guy's name. Right, but. Jennifer Morrison people know from uh, Once Upon a Time. She plays uh, she's uh, the uh, the main character in, in, in Once Upon a Time. Um, anyway, yeah. But yeah, uh, so um, you know, you have the twists and the turns. You have betrayals. You have uh, people thinking one way, and then it's another way. And the yeah. whole time, 
Um, you got a Mexican cartel that he's yeah, got to deal and, and with. The whole his, time, own, his own mentor he's got to deal with, played by um, Scatter. Yeah, and, Scatter um, was the character's Martial name. arts expert. But, but I mean, the whole time Priest has one step ahead. Yeah. Even when you think that, like, he doesn't have anything left and they've gotten the best of him, he's got one more card. So he's and just, that, like, this guy that, like, has just premeditated every single move to where yeah. like, he has a plan for everything. Yeah, there there was a there was a moment where um I think I think Rick Ross played the leader of the Snow Patrol. Sure. And he was saying to one of his underlings, "This isn't checkers, it's chess." But really, it was it was Priest that was playing chess the whole time. Exactly. I mean, and he let people think that they were in control. Yeah. He just he wasn't the type of guy that needed to flaunt who he was or what he knew or just how great he was. He dressed the part. He conducted himself the part, yeah. but. He always played himself to where, you know, he wasn't going to let everybody know in on the thing. You know, it's just he just he had a game plan the whole time, which was nice. Yeah. So and that that's one of the that's one of the strong suits of the movie is that the the, jet, the young blood priest character was mm -hmm. incredibly, incredibly sharp. And, 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 and you could and they didn't cheat on him. You know, they, they kind of showed how he was on top of everything. Right, they would do the it. flashbacks, like, like with, with, yeah. the, with how he originally got in and how, like, you know, it, it brought up the point that he was just, he was very... Uh, you know, he every detail he he would he would go into to planning out things months. He was very months. meticulous. <laughs> he was he was yeah. As a kid, he was yeah. catfishing yeah. The, a guard for, for a, a month, and he's like, house. man, you committed. You know, the guy, and that's how yeah. it scattered. Yeah. right? He he brought him in to be, and Scatter was kind of like a drug kind of kung fu master. You know, it, it, because uh, Superfly kind of played uh, kind of a superhero character, like a larger than life character. Which is common in the black exploitation genre from the '70s with your Dolomite and your Superfine Shaft and all those characters. I really dug that. That like the, there was a connection, and not only his Kung Fu master was the guy that brought him in, and just the, the manipulation there, and and you know the the everything involved yeah. in that, which uh, with the drug dealer, with the cartel from Mexico, how he knew all about that guy's family before he even met him. Right. You know, and he was so calm and collected the whole time. Never yeah. lost his cool. So um, you were, especially towards like the third, the third act, you were laughing. I was enjoying the, the over the topness. There was there was a there was a great chase scene with the with the with the cars where it just was. You, you'd expect one thing, and it just it went the extra mile on that. Yeah. Where like you're expecting just like a car a car wreck and maybe something falling on the car. No, the car just blows up. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So I mean, and that that goes to, to kind of what the what made the movie work was it was. It took some pretty ridiculous premises, mm -hmm. but made but did make them fun. Yeah, and made the, and made them smart. Um, it was pretty well written. Um, mm -hmm. He had um, the, he had the girlfriend and the mistress. The mistress was more of your uh, street tough, yeah. kind of in the know, kind of been in the game with him. There the, was uh, the girlfriend was kind of like the uh, the more um, proper more conducted yeah he would send her out on like the big the big uh the, the the big projects like like the mayor for example so there was a uh, within the movie there was a lot of of modern social consciousness tropes so for example um pre priest you talked about the two girlfriends mm -hmm. um his main girlfriend was black and the 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 other girlfriend, or they 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 were it was a three way relationship. It was an open it was an open polyamory relationship. Right. But the other the other girlfriend was Hispanic, mm -hmm. and it was it was interesting to me how how they portrayed the sexuality of the two women. The typically in typically a film. Um, blacks are their bodies are sexualized either through dance or or through actual. And there was plenty acting. of that in this movie. But they never showed the black girlfriend. They never showed her butt. They never showed her her breasts. Yeah. The, but they but they did not shy away from showing the Hispanic girl. No, pretty much everybody else in this movie was kind of like your you know your basic exhibitionist, yeah. kind of comfortable in their environment. And, but yeah. the girlfriend, like I said, she had a demeanor to. Yeah. Her. So you thought we were talking about this driving over, driving out of the theater, and and you think it was the actress herself saying. Um, well, sometimes they just shy away from yeah. nudity. I think it was a conscious decision by the director 
because there was a lot of things in the movie that that played to um, upending black tropes. So the over the top cra- the over the top car crash scene sure. actually took out a Confederate statue mm-hmm. and, and you know knocked over this Confederate soldier on a horse. And the, the whole the whole movie is fe- is set in Atlanta, other mm-hmm. than a few other than a few cutaway scenes. Um, now what was. about what about the whole thing with uh, the Snow Patrol? Like how it starts out with the uh, there's an underling with Snow Patrol that kind of just wants what Priest has, and he gets this jealous fit going, which leads to a hit that misses him. But then you know that that comes out with uh, how like uh, the brother you know actually orders the hit uh, without Priest knowing about it. Priest always wanted you know he like I said Priest is the only guy that you know has his head on straight. Right. And he has to deal with so much confusion in the movies. And that that actually goes to the the one big issue I had with the movie, mm-hmm. and that's that the the Priest character was such within this world of, of violent drug dealers, and he himself is a drug dealer, mm-hmm. um, and obviously a very successful drug dealer with, with his kind of, with, you know, with, with the yeah. wealth he has. <clears throat> but they, they've tried so hard to make him a goody two-shoes with this, with this traditional moral code of not hurting people of... And that, that kind of goes back to the code of these type of movies back in the day. But How, so the, the, the guy, no matter what he did for a living, he's the superhero. But yeah, the, the superhero aspects, yes. Mm-hmm. But I think when you're, when you're looking at movies like Scarface or what I know of the exploitation movies, kind of the point of those movies was being the good guy hasn't done anything for us. If you're the good guy, you end up in jail, you end up killed, like you assassinated like Martin Luther King, or uh, you just end up living in a slum. So, but so, uh, so the, so a the lot idea, of that, the, the jail time, that's just part of the life. But they but they didn't shy away, you know, mm-hmm. there, there's, the, there's the line in Scarface where, where uh, Al Pacino says, I am the bad guy. Like they embraced being a bad guy. That was the point of the anti-hero. Oh yeah. Whereas, you see, whereas uh, this movie, they just they wanted him to just be a straight traditional hero, like mm-hmm. almost like a Disney prince, rather than uh, you know a, what we normally think of as an anti-hero, like a Wolverine or uh, or a Scarface or a, um, um, a, there's a, there's a Deadpool or you know. Mm. Like they never really showed him doing anything bad. Yeah, yeah, and in a sense, that's that kind of makes sense. Well, it, it makes in, sense in, in a re- movie. It makes sense in a remake. It I makes mean, sense in a modern remake. But it kind of, but everything else was so over the top. It, sure. That's the one thing that kind of that kind of took it, it threw off. off yeah. If you're gonna, if it's gonna be. If you're going to have this over the top riches and the mansions and these super nice cars and mm-hmm. you know they're throwing around millions of dollars at a time. Sure. I don't buy that he's this goody two shoes that's never hurt anybody. It's, um, for for me it was it was is one thing that you know. Yeah, I mean was, those, there, those movies are kind of like that how like they they live a lifestyle but it never goes into like them being Bad. Hmm. I mean, even like 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 you go back to like the uh, the seventies, like with Dolomite, for example. He's a pimp. You know, he's got he's got his game going. You know what he's all about. But he's Dolomite. Yeah. You know, he's he's looked up to in the community. He's he's on a pedestal because he just conducts himself. He has a certain type of lifestyle. But it never goes in to that. You know, how it's like the guy's already established, the guy's already, you know, he's he's in the game and he's already, you know, he's he's who he is. Those type of characters are never brought out to be just cold blooded, vindictive murderers. It's always like if they're killing somebody, it's always because the guy did him wrong in some in some right. way. And he's got urban justice on his back. You know? Yeah. And, I mean I, I, I it it didn't throw me off too much. I'm kind of used to that, but uh, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. So what did what did what did you think of uh, Trevor Jackson's performance? I was what? like, you know, it could have it, it might have, you know, could have been cast a little it, better. It was a little under. We, you were, you, you were, know. if 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 Michael B. Jordan was in this role, yeah, God, yeah, he would have. He would have had so much fun. Trevor Jackson was a little too cerebral because I, I kept too think, downplayed. I kept thinking in this movie the way uh, the way he played. Um, 
you know, in, in Black Panther, the way he was Eric Killmonger, yeah. the way he conducted himself, that would have been a better Superfly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think the perform I think the performance was two down was two down. Now the highlight for me was Rick Ross. Oh, and the cop? I, 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 was that the cop? No, no, the, oh, the head of the Snow Patrol. Oh no, yeah, he was great, he, especially the first half of the movie. He was he like watched, a hardened CeeLo. He, he had some movies, he had some lines, particularly when he was talking to his underlings, mm -hmm. that were just that just had me that had me cracking up. With he, his he gold was teeth, it was great with yeah. his grill. I loved it. Yeah, 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 and I mean, you know. Um, who was the actress Emma Swan from Once Upon a Time? She was uh, good as a dirty cop. You know, for, I, I, for I what said, she I was said her name ten minutes ago, and now I can't remember. Who it was. <laughs> but uh, it's okay. She's yeah. Emma Swan to me. Yeah. But uh, she was good in the cop, the dirty cop. Yeah. You know, they they both played it really good. Where it's like he didn't really know, you know, uh, what they were going to do. You know, the cop started out with uh, uh, what were the characters that he pulled over the. Uh, uh, Fat, Fred. Fat Freddy, Fat and, Freddy and, and his, his girlfriend, and his, you know, not, and, and he, not his girlfriend, his uh, mistress, his it, second. I mean, he pulls them over, he gets them, they go and they meet the other gal, you know. Oh, that was one of the funniest parts of the movie. Yeah. So, the, the, so he gets pulled over by a white by a white cop, <laughs> and and as as he as the white cop has Fat Freddy and his girlfriend on the curb. He's going through the car singing and riding, riding dirty. dirty. And that's pretty funny. <laughs> that He's like pretty, riding dirty. And that, that was that was pretty comical. <laughs> right. Well, what, what wasn't funny was when the cop then just assassinated. Fat well, Freddy. yeah. Well, he he puts him in the squad car with the dope. They go and they meet the gal that he's partners with. That they're these dirty cops that are you know just trying to extort money. And then he takes him back to the car. Says, "Have a good night. Take your girlfriend home. Lets him drive up about a quarter mile up the road. Pulls him." over again and just yeah. shoots him. Acts like they're pulling and, a gun so he gets he, the camera. But he, yes, so he's he a, does that a so he gets the, 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 car, yeah. the, the car cam footage. Yeah. And, but I, I, I like I liked the way it turned around like in the very end how um, you know he Priest went and he made a rendezvous with the cop and he brought a bag out and it made it look like oh did he make a deal with the cop? Did, did something go shady where the cop you know turned on his partner? Nah. Nah man. He just Kick the shit out of yeah. him. It was great. It was. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty um, good. So I mean, the, uh, overall, it was, and, a, it was and, a and fun the guy, movie. The guy, the guy that played the Mexican cartel drug dealer, how he's into the soccer, and yeah. how he knew that his favorite soccer team, Priest, knew the team, the players, and the and even the guy's favorite player. Yeah. That wasn't everybody else's favorite player. Meticulous detail was yeah. so great. Had this guy's trust in five minutes. Yeah. Never met him I've, after almost being thrown out of an airplane. Right, and I recognize that actor from Younger Stitz. Like I swear that was the actor that played um, in La Bomb. He played uh, Richie Valens' older brother, I believe. As no, we... he wasn't that old. No, Lamont was like thirty years ago. No, okay, he looked just like him. Yeah, didn't he, that, didn't he, like, didn't he look Lamont familiar was... though? Because looked... the guy looked older in this one, but not that old. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He looked familiar, though. He looked he like that been. guy. Yeah, anyway, I don't want to waste yeah. too much Anyways, time on that. Yeah. To <laughs> sum right. it all up, it yeah, was some, a good movie. Know. You know, it was a better remake than, uh, what was the last one? Uh, Death Mary. Wish. Oh, Death Wish was horrible. You know, I'm, I'm just comparing it to, to, to the 70s movies that they're yeah, remaking. Yeah, Death now. Wish was, Death it, Wish was yeah, terrible. Yeah, if you, if you want a better remake, you know, it, this was better than Death Wish. Yeah, I, yeah I'd say, I mean, I, I want to put this on any top 10 list, but I'd give yeah. it a solid two and three quarter, three stars maybe. Yeah, it you know, fun. go go, go for a matinee in a comfy chair and sit yeah. yourself back and... Yeah, drink a beer. And yeah, you'll enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so uh, for those of you that have seen the movie, um, and it's, it looks like there aren't too many people that are seeing it. It looks like the numbers are kind of down this weekend. But yeah. um, if you've seen it, go ahead and leave your comments below what you thought of it. It's always fun to read those. And uh, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe to see more. And I'm Jeff. Jason. Get on the bandwagon.